Are you in a cafe or maybe you're at home and your grinder has just stopped working? Follow these quick, simple steps and I'll get you out of trouble. I'm gonna make this super quick and easy for you because I wanna get you back up and running making coffee as quickly as possible. First things first, let's check that you got power to the machine. Go and check the power point. Make sure it's plugged in, that's step number one. Now, if you still can't see any lights on the machine, there is also safety pins on your grinders. On the back of a Mazar, there's a long pin at the end. If that is loose, it won't light up. So make sure the pin at the back of, say, a Mazar grinder is nice and tight. Something like the Anthem has a safety pin that has to be pushed in when you tighten the hopper, but it also has one behind the chute. So make sure your safety pins are pushed in. Otherwise, they might have turned off your grinder as a safety feature. Then also, you might have tripped the circuit. Maybe there was a fault with the grinder and your power circuit just protected itself. So go check your circuit board and make sure you haven't tripped the circuit. All right, so you've got power back to the machine. It seems simple enough, but have you got coffee in the hopper? Make sure you've got beans in there, but a huge mistake people make is they forget to have the hopper slide open. So make sure your beans can get through because you might be grinding, grinder's completely fine, but the coffee isn't actually going through. So we know we've got coffee going through it. Now let's make sure that the coffee can actually get out. There is inside here quite a big chute and this can often get blocked. So sometimes the grinder is working, but the coffee actually just can't get out. This can get full of coffee. So make sure you take the lid off, have a look inside. You might just need to unblock that, let the coffee through and it will flow through. Otherwise it might be the clump crusher. Give that a clean out and make sure the coffee can flow through there as well. If you're on a grinder like this, you might need to take the chute off, unscrew the two screws there, take the chute off, take the clump crusher out and try to clean it out. It might just be just a blockage at the front and the coffee just can't come out. Once you release that, it will let the coffee come out and you won't have the issue anymore. Just be mindful that some clump crushers are really delicate and you don't want to just go sticking stuff in there to release the coffee because you might do more damage. Now you've got this far and still no coffee. Now we can assume that there's a foreign object like a rock or a large coffee bean or just your grind is too fine. So now we need to, what we're gonna do is, re let's remember what the setting we're currently on is so that we can go back to it if we do unblock it. But we really need to go coarse. What's happening is your burrs are very close together and there's potentially, either the burrs are touching each other and that's even worse, but also there might just be something that's not allowing the motor to turn and, and cut through that, whether it's a rock or a large bean or your grind is too fine and there's a lot of coffee stuck in the burrs and it's unable to turn. The fix there is to go very coarse. Obviously we don't wanna go so coarse that we actually undo the whole um, mechanism but we can do a large like coarse change. I would go from this fine setting way back to a much coarser setting and we're just opening up the burrs. We wanna see if the coffee can go through. Now, while you're doing this, you do wanna be running the grinder. So either manually doing it or pressing the button, but it does help to, if the motor is running while you're going coarse, it might help to push that foreign object out or the bean or release some of that ground coffee that's stuck in there. Now at this point, I really hope you have been managed to get some grind through, whether we've unblocked it, whether we've opened the burrs up and that object is out or the grind has been able to release because at this point, you really need a technician to go much further. I don't really recommend you open up the grinder or pull the burrs apart because it actually probably do more damage than trying to put it all back together. At this point, we do really need a professional to come and have a look open it right up, clean it out. It might be full of grind and it might be too far gone. And that's, that's one thing that we come up against is once you go certain, past a certain point, there's too much grind that's built up inside the grinder. It's just not something that you can fix on the spot and you will need a technician. Whether or not I was able to get you out of trouble with those quick steps, you still need to learn for future reference how to not get in this situation again. So there's a few things. Firstly, let's make sure that your motor of your grinder is good enough to actually grind the burrs. It might be time for an upgrade. If your grinder is uh, a low power or a low revolution per minute grinder and it's just not up to the work that you're putting it through and it can't grind the coffee well enough and that's what's getting it blocked, it might be time to upgrade your grinder to something more powerful. Next would be your burrs. The burr set that you have in your grinder will only last so long. Something like a Kony has about 650 to 800 kilos um, capacity. 
once you go up to the anthems, you get a larger range. Plus, once you go into like ceramic burrs, you actually have a longer lifetime on those burrs. As burrs get older, they will get blunter and therefore they won't cut through the coffee grind, the coffee beans and you will get an inconsistent grind particle size. You'll also get a opportunity of blocking your grinder because it just can't cut through the beans like it once did. So make sure you're keeping your burrs up to date, nice and sharp, and you will avoid those issues. If you can tell that the motor is lagging, maybe when you act, press the button and try to activate it, it takes a second to kick in, you might need to replace the capacitor in your grinder. This is something a technician can help you do. The simplest thing is to keep your grinder clean. I would highly recommend taking the beans out at the end of the day, every day, making sure your hopper is clean, cleaning out any excess grind through the chute. The buildup of coffee over time is really what causes the biggest issues on grinds, grinder blockages, and it's just the oils that get stuck in, and over time, that buildup is what makes the chute smaller as the coffee tries to get through or can't get through and it backs up. So making sure you're looking after your equipment, keeping it nice and clean, is really gonna avoid any issues. Now you need to make sure that you're following a recipe that ensures that your dose is correct. Check out the link below, we've done recipe videos before, but it's, it's mostly making sure that you're using the right dose for the basket that you're using. If you're underdosing, it might be making you go finer on your grind, and therefore you'll be blocking your grinder by going finer and creating more issues than you need. Maybe you need to increase the dose so you don't have to go so fine. So make sure you understand the best recipe for your equipment to avoid underdosing and therefore going too fine and blocking your grinder. Now, you also wanna make sure that you're not using coffee that's really fresh. Fresh coffee within seven days from roast date will be more prone to static. And static is the enemy when it comes to grinders and it just blocks grinders all the time. So make sure your coffee's not too fresh, whether you're at home, maybe open up the bag the day before you go to use it, make sure it's not getting used within seven days of roast date. Ideally, a coffee's gonna taste great from 10 to 30 days. That's the optimal window for flavor. So you don't need to use really fresh coffee. It's actually going to be cause more issues with static and it just generally, the ground particle size is a lot bigger and the burrs work differently as it ages. So I would recommend going to rtc.com.au, buy yourself a bag of fresh beans roasted here and we'll send them to you, age them by a week and then crack them and they will taste delicious and they'll reduce the static and make sure that you've got great coffee in your home. By buying our beans, you not only will get better coffee for home, but you'll also be supporting our channel so we can continue to make videos just like this to get you out of trouble, whether you're at home or in a cafe. Now, this video is designed for anyone in trouble, but there is heaps of videos out there on our channel. Check them all out. They're about how to make a better coffee at home, how to make a better coffee in a cafe, how to run a better coffee shop. So we suggest heading to all those videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you see all the future videos. Hit the bell icon, like this video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks guys, bye.